city of death and heavy fighting, Volchansk of Ukraine is mini Stalingrad. Volchansk, where military officials say there is ongoing fighting and was once home to about 17,000 people, is about five kilometers from the Russian border. Now the city is almost destroyed. The defense forces keep most of Volchansk under their control, but fierce fighting continues the Guardian reports. The material says that on the first day of a full-scale invasion, the Russians captured the city but retreated six months later due to the offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces. However, on May the 10th of this year, Russian troops returned to plans to occupy Volchansk. They have now captured a clinic and a meat processing plant. Since then, a brutal battle has begun. Russian troops control the north of the city and part of the destroyed western areas, while Ukrainian troops hold the center. The fighting goes house by house. Volchansk now resembles a mini Stalingrad of the 21st century, a place of death, shooting and close combat, writes the publication. At the same time, military personnel of the 57th Separate Motorized Infantry Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces say that the sky over Volchansk is covered with drones, both Ukrainian and Russian. According to defenders, drones are the biggest problem of this war and because of them it is even impossible to remove armored vehicles from the city. But on the other hand, they effectively help destroy the enemy. First, Russia brought in tanks. We destroyed them all in five minutes. If our artillery doesn't get them, then the drones will definitely get them. I don't feel sorry for them. They are constantly trying to seize our territory. The Russians are a zombie people. If we don't, if we stop, they will continue, said one of the military men of the 57th Brigade. Local residents who were under occupation also talk about the difficult situation in the city. Thus, a resident of Volchansk, Valentina, says that the invaders even broke into hospitals where they set up their observation posts and shot civilians who tried to evacuate. The Russians thought that it would be easy to take Volchansk, but they were wrong. Ukraine is fighting back. The publication quotes the woman as saying, the material also noted that now the Kremlin is not giving up on seizing the city. The occupiers are trying to take control of the road that connects Volchansk with Kupiansk in order to break through closer to Kharkiv. Russia can launch nuclear strike against any NATO country member of Duma made scandalous statement. Russia can launch a nuclear strike against any NATO country and not only, said Andrei Kartapolov, chairman of the Russian State Duma Defense Committee. Technically, based on our capabilities, we can strike any country, both NATO and non-NATO, and any other country at all. But it is on what ground we will make such decisions that we will see based on the specific situation. Kartapolov told the parliamentary newspaper, they think they can play with us indefinitely. No, they can't. Remember, as it was said in the wonderful Soviet film, the meeting place cannot be changed. Don't be afraid, we won't stab you painfully. One second and you're already in heaven. And it will be the same here. Kartapolov concluded, threats against the West from Moscow have been heard since the first day of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. In particular, the official representative of the Russian Foreign Ministry, Maria Zakharova, previously warned that armed supplies to Kyiv are bringing NATO closer to the dangerous point of a direct military clash with Russia. Recently, President Vladimir Putin said at a meeting with the heads of world news agencies, that Russia can supply its long-range weapons to those regions of the world from which it will be possible to deliver sensitive blows to countries supplying weapons to Ukraine. We are thinking about the fact that if someone considers it possible to supply such weapons to a combat zone to strike our territory and create problems for us, then why do we not have the right to supply our weapons of the same class to those regions of the world where strikes will be carried out on sensitive targets on those countries that do this against Russia? He asked. At the same time, Putin emphasized that the answer may be asymmetrical. We will think about it, the head of state added. Currently, 14 states have allowed Ukraine to use weapons supplied by them against military targets on Russian territory. These are the USA, Germany, Canada, Denmark, France, Great Britain, the Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, Finland, Czech Republic, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. The decision was made in connection with another escalation of the conflict on the part of Russia which has increased the shelling of critical infrastructure in Ukraine and launched an offensive in the Kharkiv region. 